All right, today I have some re reciprocating saw blades and I'm gonna make a field expedient saw. Actually, I kind of like this saw, so I've been using it a bit on different stuff. Got some new blades that I wanna try. These I've used in my reciprocating saw and they really, they'll tear through up, they'll tear, tear up anything. I've had really good luck in old dry hedge with these. They're not expensive, you can get them at Walmart, but it, you gotta be careful. They're like the old handsaw blades, they will eat some wood. You put a motor behind them, they really get after it. As of this filming, we're really close to, the channel's really close to 2,000 subscribers. I wanna thank everybody for watching and putting up with my videos. You know, I hope you enjoy them as much as I enjoy making them. I started out, I've made these before. They make handles for these. You can buy them in nearly any of the box hardware stores. Um, I either usually never have them or I've broken so many of them I just quit buying them because they're just, they're not real well made. They clip in and tighten down basically and I usually end up either breaking that or that piece comes out and gets lost and then it's worthless. So I just decided to make my own out of stuff that I usually had and they're not too difficult to make. So you just need some good cord and Spectra, Dyneema, Kevlar even, you can use some of the 95 or a little heavier 550 cord. Just be aware that that has enough of a stretch that it'll make life interesting for a little bit. But the basic principle of the saw is fairly easy. You've got the saw, you need a handle of which you can cut to any length that you want to get hold of. This, since I happen to like titanium, I got hold of some titanium tubing. I've tried it out of copper, which bends too easy. It can be done, especially for an emergency one if you have copper. Aluminum's the same way. I don't recommend using it. Stainless steel, iron pipe, anything along that line from just under 7 16 just under half an inch, to maybe about 5 8 um, I ran up 14 millimeter is this one, and this was... 10 millimeter inside diameter and this is 14 so they both will work the only thing is this this back here across I believe is 9 16 maybe a bit less so if you're going to use something smaller than that you have to flatten your tube out so it'll fit in the other thing you got to remember when you flatten your tube out don't get it too flat because the cord you're using to go through the hole has to be tied in a knot, so it's got to be able to make it down through there. 14 millimeter, as you can see, fits in with just a little bit of slop. You want to, you don't want it to clear this top lip or this bottom lip. So that sets in there. You can go in and further refine it by putting a little notch in there that this will fit in. I don't usually bother. So once you do that, my gig is you run this, run this down through from the back to the front. Then you run it through your hole. And you can melt this down if you want. But if you can get it through the hole, all the better. Get it through the hole. And you can get this, this is Amazon purchase. It's your super cords anymore, you can use any cord, just remember if you're using a natural cord that you can't put as much tension on it, it'll work, especially if you got your pipe to fit fairly good where it'll grab in there. The only thing it's doing is holding it in. So you slide this in, pull your cord through, and then cut it off. And you want enough to cut off that you can, I usually do it to have an adjustable knot. And then just tie it in a simple overhand. But when you do it, you can use a screw from your kit, a piece of wood, anything like that. Just remember on the back side of your tube, you want it fairly smooth and rounded off. Okay, so you tie a knot to whatever your little toggle is that goes in there will fit in there relatively easy. This way if you get a bigger toggle if you're using a stick you can move your knot. 
we'll just use a screw because it's easier. You slip the screw in between. Switch it around because I'm right-handed. Slip that in the hole that you made basically by using the knot. You can use a small nail. Most, a lot of times you should probably carry a nail anyway in your kit. Then you twist it up. And as you twist it up, it tightens that. As you can see, this is slick enough that it won't really, you got to get it fairly tight to get it to want to stay. You can cut a couple notches back here, which would really make life a lot easier. Okay, that's good and tight. And this is a piece of hard Osage, and this is a carbide pruning saw. And if anybody's ever messed with it, Osage, especially old and dry like this, is wicked hard, and it is hell on edges. It does all kinds of bad stuff. It burns really hot, and it's very strong. They used to use it for spokes and wagon wheels back in the day. You can steam it and shape it and do all kinds of things with it. it makes It's also known as bow to arc. It makes great bows if you can find a piece around here straight enough to do it with. But that's cutting fairly easy. And you can see it looks it, it, it always looks bad on the outside, but that's just the very outside. The inside, this is an old, old piece because it's got that orange look to it. And it's not pulling that for the, as aggressive as the teeth are. It's not pulling as hard as I thought it would. See, I need to put notches in there. I just hit it and it started spinning it loose, which isn't any big deal. A file will take care of that. You can tell how hard this stuff is. It's cutting pretty easy. But those teeth are really aggressive, so it's just bouncing across the top and rattling it. But it's taking chunks out. I kind of like this saw blade. If it goes through the dry stuff like this, it'd eat through the it'd eat through green around here like nobody's business. I like that. This is a, a newer bit of Osage. It's probably been down for maybe a year, if that. You can tell by the color of it, it's a lot. It hadn't been dead as long. This stuff probably has been dead as long as I've been alive anyway. This is still what most people would call not overly seasoned Osage. It's dry, but it's still it's still plowing through it. I would probably wrap, leather wrap that handle. It's actually quite functional. Okay, now the other one, that's a bit, that's kind of on the small end as far as I'm concerned. This one, especially if this one was wrapped in leather, would be really good. So let's run this through. And you could have different blades like this set up to the length of your handle and carry it in your pack or your gear and they don't weigh nothing. They're easy to make. You can swap it out. You can carry an extra bit of cord if you need to to remake it. 
or if a cord, you know, if you wear through the cord, things along that line. Okay, there's the other end. All this cord could be carried in your pack. You know, extra cord's always kind of handy, and if you get decent cord, Spectre, Dyneema, Kevlar, 550 cord even work. The 95 cord works. Like I said, just the stuff with the stretch, expect it. You can thread the cord through the hole again. You could have extra blades that you want to carry with you. Different sorts. Hacksaw, you know, like, like this one for cutting metal. Finer tooth ones for really fine detail work. Different things along that line. All set up, ready to go, and carry them in a tube or a little little piece of tube or an envelope or anything along that line with these laid up in alongside each other. And you've got a kit ready to go that weighs a little or nothing. And depending on if you scavenge everything, except for the cord, and you can use, like I said, if it's 550 cord, that would be fairly cheap. The only thing you really have any money in would be these unless you're buying your tubing. And your tubing that you can get, iron tubing, stainless steel tubing, if you can find an outlet for it, you'd be good to go. Run your stick, your screw, whatever you've got in there in between again. Turn it around again because I'm a righty. And just tighten it up. And these blades aren't a real big fan of the dry Osage. They'll take the edge off of a lot of teeth. They will cut it. Just be aware that if it's a super hardwood like Osage, you're probably going to dull a lot of blades. I mean that's just with anything. They eat up chains, good chainsaw blades so that's the other that's the other bonus for putting notches in this just a couple little notches so your blade is stay in there and don't want to spin. Once you get it tight enough same way with this do like the Romans did on their siege weapons have notches to where they tighten up the horsehair strands. There's that. There's two saws pretty much ready to go right there. Throw up a piece of cottonwood on this one. see where the notches would be handier in this because it would hold the blade to keep it from wanting to turn there we go I like those type of blades I'm really starting to like this one too first time I ever tried one of these cranks right through that. It'll help you processing stuff for fire too. Cut you start cutting you off some smaller bits for fire then you're getting up your stuff in here for tender material. Easy peasy. Things work out good. But these will break down to a little bit of nothing. And then you've got a saw that's easy to carry, works out fairly strong. Blade and handle. And a 
another. And you can customize these any way you want them. Personally, I'd probably wrap it in cord or leather. Just especially on the smaller one for me to get a better grip on it. Because hanging on to that is kind of wearing on the hands. A little bit of cord in your pack, which you should always have anyway. But there's two saws that was fairly easy to make. And like I said, I would avoid aluminum and copper for these probably just simply because they're not, it's not strong enough. The other thing is these have dual uses. You could pop it out, use it to blow on a coal, get for woodworking and stuff like that when you're, if you burn out a bowl, if you're out in the woods, you can use this like a straw to keep your face away from the heat, to pull water up out of crevices, all kinds of things. They have more than one use, but the tube is actually kind of handy for a lot of things in bushcrafting. So you try to make it, you do more than what it is. And titanium, you don't have to worry about it rusting, corroding. That's why I went with it. I just like titanium. You don't have to. Stainless, iron pipe, uh, anything along that line that's stiff and rugged, particularly that you can step on and not damage, would work. Easy bushcraft saws, fairly cheap to make depending on the materials. And you could do it on your own. Another bit of gear making. Smash the subscribe button such as you would, you'll feel some foe. Oh. Odin's wolf survival. Oh.